What up, suckas? Are you taking care of your dads today on Father's Day, including me, since I'm your YouTube dad? You better be. Also, do you know what time it is? It's time for the very curious news from around your mom. So have your mom call me with the amazing card. Very curious news item number one. American superstar Landon Donovan is apparently Mexico's biggest fan. Now before I get into the details of why the former captain of the US men's national team and my former teammate is supporting our biggest rival, maybe he knew deep down that Mexico were gonna beat Germany. And if so, a hat tip to him for that because Mexico didn't just beat the reigning World Cup champions, they outplayed them all over the field and they outcoached them off the field as well. And I mean, Germany had no answers for anything that the Mexicans were doing, especially on counterattacks led by Carlos Vela and Irving Lozano. And this was even after halftime when the Germans had time to collect their thoughts and solve these problems and they still couldn't figure it out. So I'm sure they learned the phrase, no mames way, quite well after that. And the Mexicans were the deserved winner. So I really look forward to seeing how they build off of this because it'll be easy to have an emotional letdown in the next game. Also, I wanna give a shout out to Rafa Marquez who, despite my disagreement with him on a few things that he said over the years, he just played in his fifth World Cup, which is a crazy achievement and something that he should be very proud of. So I bow down to his longevity and what he's accomplished during his career. Hashtag respeto. Now as for Germany, I fear two things are working against them in this tournament. One, no team that has won the Confederations Cup has gone on to win the World Cup the following summer, and those are the cold, hard facts. And two, France won the World Cup in 1998, then crashed out of the group stages in 2002. And then Italy won it in 2006, and then crashed out in the group stages in 2010. And Spain won it in 2010, and then crashed out of the group stages in 2014. So I think you're picking up on the pattern that I'm putting down. So that is three out of the last four World Cup champions that have crashed out in the group stages the following World Cup, proving just how difficult it is to stay at a high level, both mentally and physically, every four years, no matter how stacked your team is with talent. Also, it wasn't like the Germans played well and got unlucky. They just weren't good, and their team shape while defending and pressing was awful, and maybe the worst I've ever seen from the German national team. So, until they correct that and get everybody working together and on the same page, as opposed to defending in ones and twos, they're not gonna win any games in this tournament. But back to Landon Donovan, he just came out with an ad campaign with the bank Wells Fargo, saying that he's supporting Mexico for the World Cup, which made me give a, what the fuck type of look when I first read it, and then I forgot all about it. But then, another former captain for the team, Carlos Bocanegra, called him out on Twitter, and then Landon responded saying that Carlos owes much of his skill to playing with Mexicans and having a dad of Mexican descent, and that he needs to take a look around our country to see if he's happy with how we're treating Mexicans here. And whoa, that took a big jump from a sporting rivalry into something much, much bigger, which got it back on my radar, so I wanted to address it. First off, if Landon wants to support Mexico because of the reasons he mentioned to Carlos and about standing for something important and to support a culture and people that I have a ton of respect for, that I'm all for it. That is, if he wasn't being paid to say these things, that's where it gets sticky. Now I've known Landon for a long time and I know he has a big heart, so I know he means well and he wants to be supportive for people who are going through a difficult time, but once he agrees to take money to say these things, it just feels less genuine whether it is or not. Also, and I'm only speaking for me here, there is no way that I could support the Mexican national team, and I'll tell you why. My only goal for the US was against Mexico, and have you seen it before? You haven't seen it before? Roll the clip. Okay, fine, don't roll the clip. We've all seen it 50 times before, but seriously, roll the clip. Number four for the United States, Lennon sends it in, the header, and it's in the back of the net! It's such a great goal. What made it so special was because it was against Mexico, our biggest rivals. Had it been against Guatemala or Trinidad or anyone else, it wouldn't have mattered as much. So I really don't want to lose the magic that exists on the field between our two countries. Also from a supporting perspective, Manchester United fans weren't hoping Liverpool would win the Champions League just because they're from the same area or play in the same league. Nor were Barcelona fans supporting Real Madrid in this final or in anything else for that matter. I mean, could you imagine a famous Mexican national team player supporting the US? No, never, it would just never happen. So I'm not gonna support them either, no matter how much I love all my Mexican friends. Very curious news item number two. Come on, Brazil. Right after the World Cup draw back in December, I picked you to win the whole thing, the whole goddamn thing. 
And after a good start to the game, which was highlighted by Philippe Coutinho scoring one of the goals of the tournament, but not as good as Nacho's. That was some next level-ish. They got two lacks on a set piece, and Switzerland scored on a free header in the middle of the goal from six yards out, which is unacceptable. Now, I know some of you will say, but, 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 Miranda got pushed. And you're right. The Brazilian center back, who I think is a terrific player, did get a little nudge, but... What was he doing ahead of the guy he was marking in the first place? Okay, say the corner's over there. He's here. Here's his player. The goal's my face. He can't even see him, right? What is he doing? And yes, maybe this is a harsh assessment of his positioning, but this is the f***ing World Cup, and you have to concentrate at all times and in every way. Otherwise, you get punished for little mistakes, so you can't take breaks or hope that the ref is going to bail you out. Also, I got to be a little harsh to Allison and goal as well, because if the ball is dropping in that close to goal, we, as proper fans of the game, have to question whether he could have come out and owned that space instead of leaving all the responsibility to his defenders as he stayed rooted to the line. Ha, <sighs> I'm hot. I don't like being wrong with my predictions. Now, with all this said, Brazil had a ton of possession and we're the better team. And Neymar, in particular, looked very sharp, which is always a good sign that the team is going to make a deep run because when he's motivated, they usually play well. So for me, they deserve more than the one point that they got, which means I'm not all that concerned about them. Like, I'm concerned for Germany because Germany was bad. But still, come on, Brazil. Very curious news item number three. The old guys still got it. And by old guys, I mean Alexander Kolarov, the 32-year-old left back who scored an incredible free kick which held up as the game winner in Serbia's 1-0 win over Costa Rica, even though, let's be honest, Serbia should have scored a whole lot more. And I'm looking at you, Sergei Milinkovic Savic, who had a few chances, but I think it's pretty obvious to everyone that he's gonna hit the back of the net at some point in this tournament because he's a special player. Also, in case you missed the game, Costa Rica didn't look anything like the Costa Rica that we saw four years ago in Brazil. So I think that Tico's time in Russia is gonna be short-lived, but they can still influence who advances and who doesn't because this now sets up a huge second round of games in this group. And if I'm comparing the performances of everyone after the first round of games in Group B, I think Switzerland is gonna beat Costa Rica in the next game, which would give the Swiss four points, which means Brazil would be under some serious pressure to get something off of Serbia in the next game, which is not going to be easy because they're going to be coming in with a ton of confidence. And if Brazil don't get something from that, holy crap, it could get dicey. And I'm not sure I want to live in a world where the team I predicted to win it all doesn't even get out of their group. Anyway, that is it. That is all I got. So let me know your thoughts after you hit like and subscribe. And then please follow me on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram at Jimmy Conrad for more of this top-notch analysis. I'll see you tomorrow. Later.